Hi, I'm Jay from Real Street Performance. Today we're going to talk about aluminum connecting rods and at what point it becomes a good idea for your build. We've used the Manly Turbo Tough and the Carrillo Pro H beam in excess of 300 horsepower per cylinder and have not had a rod failure. So I have not broken or bent a connecting rod or lost a bolt at that power level. Just because we haven't overpowered the rod doesn't mean it's the best rod for the application. Now the majority of the people that I talk to or build engines for, I would say nine out of 10 guys, they're just fine in a steel rod. They're gonna make a big dyno sheet. They're gonna run their car a few times throughout the year. They're gonna do a bunch of highway pulls, just average guys. Steel rod is the right move for them. However, for the guy that's really gonna push the envelope, the guy that's gonna quarter mile, half mile, one mile, run it as hard as it can be run, 10,000 RPM, just really, really terrorize his engine, I'm gonna to wanna to move him into an aluminum rod. When picking a connecting rod, I think people get caught up in the rod that will handle the power without asking themselves the next question. And the next question is, how long will it handle the power in between having to be serviced? So as we move north of 1,000 horsepower, 1,200, 1,400, 1,600, 1,800, we hadn't had a part failure in the sense that a crank, a rod, a piston, nothing was breaking. But we were dealing with a bearing wear that was accelerated far past what we had at 1,000 horsepower street engine. An extreme example of this would be a top fuel dragster. Every time the dragster goes down the track, the engine has to be serviced, the bearings have to be changed. So you make a run in the dragster, you come back to the pits, instead of updating your Instagram with some sort of victory dance of the good you've done, you change the bearings in your engine. Fortunately for us with high horsepower street applications, the results are not as extreme. You can run the engine at 200 horsepower a cylinder and experience very good bearing life. As you go to 275, 300 horsepower a cylinder, you're gonna realize that an accelerated bearing wear is now a new problem for you to deal with. While the steel rod offers you a very long lifespan because the rod itself doesn't wear out, it transmits the majority of its vibration and force from the top of the piston directly into the bearing, directly into the crankshaft. So it would be like taking your shock absorbers off your car and just replacing them with solid parts and you'd then feel all that transmission from the road right into the seat. So if we stay with the same suspension analogy, the aluminum rod is your shock absorber. The power from the combustion is still going to be transmitted from the piston through the rod to the crank. All that's still happening, but the aluminum rod softens up that whole experience. So where you were getting a lot of vibration and harshness pounding on the bearing, now the aluminum rod absorbs it quiets it down and what you end up with is a longer bearing life. You have a increased crank life, you have increased uh, block life, all the vibration that was normally rattling and making some micro welding on the caps, a lot of that's gonna go away because the aluminum rod eliminates a lot of that nastiness. Now because the rod is aluminum, it begins to be the next service item. So before when you were replacing bearings, now you're gonna be replacing rods. The good news is, You'll be replacing rods about the same time you're replacing pistons because none of this stuff is going to live forever at 300 horsepower per cylinder. The first thing you'll notice when you unbox the aluminum rod is there's more material. It's a bulkier part. Because the aluminum is a softer material, they use more of it to make it capable of doing the job that we need done. Because the rod is physically larger than the steel rod, it's going to add some steps that you're going to have to follow during assembly. You're gonna to wanna to check the clearance between the small end of the rod and the piston pin piers. You're gonna to wanna to check clearance between the rod and the block at the base of the cylinders, around any girdle. Um, you're gonna run, run the rod through its motion. You can use a aluminum 60 thousandths uh, welding wire and kind of pinch the welding wire in areas that you can't see with your eyes to make sure that it has clearance. Uh, the bearings are going to be doweled, so on the bottom of the bearing, there's a dowel hole that is going to locate the bearing in the rod. You're going to want to not beat on the engine with the oil cold. The oil must be up to temperature before you beat on the engine because the rod does have a different set of properties from cold to hot. So as it warms up, it grows. 
you're gonna to wanna to run 10 thousandths more clearance between the piston and the head because the piston head relationship with aluminum rod is a little bit different because the rod does grow a little bit with the heat. So these are just some small considerations to make when you go to an aluminum rod program. I hope you found this information useful. I know that in the past, aluminum rod has been thought of something that was kind of a race only or an exotic component. However, it's so easy to make power nowadays, you're gonna have guys that are gonna to move to an aluminum rod, whereas before they may have thought that it was, you know, kind of a, kind of a strange or really off the wall custom thing. It's a common part, they're commonly available. And if you are one of the guys that's going to be operating their engine at a very high level, then this could be the right move for you. If you have any questions, please comment below or you can email us. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,